Welcome to Cozy Nights with Jenny, where the lighting is not natural because I faffed about today like I've never faffed before. So I'm going for that cozy aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, it's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. I hope, like me, you're drinking. The World Health Organization says that alcohol is not the way to cope with these times, but well, what do they know? So I've got my damn gin. Because I got up at 7pm today, which is a new low for me because depression is a thing, and insomnia is a thing, and I just don't feel motivated or focused on anything right now. So I've put, got up, put on lots of makeup, wanted to go out, out, but I'm staying in, in with my books and my gin, and isn't that what everyone's doing right now? Anyway, I will stop moaning. That's around with me saying, I hope you're doing better than I am, and I'm very flipping grateful that I like books and that I have lots of them. I'm so, so privileged to have such a, a wide t physical TBR on my shelves and Cation Books and Things is doing, I can't remember what it's called because I do no research for my videos but it's something like a TBR readathon clear out thing in April where you just read books on a TBR and while I did go to the library on three different occasions before it shut and got out 18 books on loan it, collectively I still have a lot of books I want to read for my TBR this is much broader than I said I wanted and at the beginning of the year I was like, I'm not going to do white TBRs, and this is a really big TBR, but it's more kind of like a selection, and some of them are already books. Anyway, I'll just shut up and start now, and put this down, reluctantly. Right, let's get down to business, to the TBR. This is the first book that I've actually already started, but you know, it's the 4th of April, so I'm going to mention it anyway. I'm finally reading this, sorry, it is Queen Victoria, Lucy Wellesley. <laughs> Daughter, wife, mother and widow, so it's obviously about Queen Victoria, but interestingly, rather than just giving an, a kind of broad overview of her life, each chapter is taken from a, a specific day. So some of it is actually before she was born, so it's um, her mother marrying her father and her being born and the, you know, and so on throughout her life. And I think it's a really original way of looking at it. I am buddy reading this with Emma from a couple of books, who's very lovely, and you should definitely check out her channel if you haven't already. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I loved her Jane Austen at Home biography. So I, I think this is really readable as well. And I just like her style a lot. So there's that. And it's very beautiful, which makes me happy, obviously. So on to all the other books I'm going to whiz through. This is a book, Silver Lines Playbook, Matthew Quick, that I've had for years, but I didn't want to read it because I know that one of the characters reads a Hemingway novel, which I think is a farewell to arms, so I wanted to read that first. I only read that a few months ago, so I finally read that, I feel like I can finally read this, and it's one of those books that I think I'm going to read and get rid of. As I am probably going to feel about The Glass Room by Simon Moore, look, listen, look at this, look at this. Shortlist of Man Booker Prize 2009. I've owned this not since then, but probably 2011, so it's a long time. So I think it's a certain thing, oh no, yes there is something about Second World War Nazis, I think it's Czech as well, yeah, I don't know, I'll let you know, I might not be so into this, but um, I really liked the first chapter which I read years ago, and then never read it, so there's that, that's kind of a possible, then I really want to read all the books that I bought by my birthday last year, so one of them I haven't read yet, is Go Went Gone by Jenny Erfenbeck, which is a German translated novel, I think it's about refugees, yes, Richard, which how professors, like, um, his city, yes, it has taken, like, has, has asylum seekers from Africa, and I think it's about the uh, two communities, um, and how they merge or don't merge, and attitudes towards foreign people and migrancy and all these things so this is definitely a book for me but I don't know if this will be emotional or hopeful I'm not sure I've never read her before I've heard great great things so that'll be nice and then a book that is for Feminist Orchestra Book Club which is inside this place not of it narratives from women's prison this is one of the library books so apologies for the shine I was very excited to find it at the library though I thought we didn't have it so it is I think 12 or so different women I'm not going to count but it's different um, verbatim stories of women in American prisons and kind of how the system is broken and their own experiences and I thought it sounded like hard hitting definitely kind of thing I'll read like an essay and then put it down and then read just something nice like see who gun and then pick this up again but um, really important and fascinating even though it is focused on America and not the UK so there's that one then sorry I'm really gonna try and not make 20 minutes 
there is Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, which I only bought because there was going to be a play coming to my theatre of this book, and obviously that never happened. <laughs> so now I feel like I should read it anyway in case it does come later in the year. And I've never read D.H. Lawrence before. If I'm honest, everyone I know doesn't really love his work. And I think this is just interesting because it has, you know, the controversial sex scene, and I want to see, like, how well written it is. Someone told me that he was one of the first writers to understand women, and I, I find that hard to believe. Like, I've just never heard that from anyone else, but we'll see. But I've got a, an audiobook of Samantha Bond reading this, and I love her voice. So I think even if I didn't love the book, I'll enjoy the experience of reading it because she is reading it to me, um, even though I bought this edition of it. I, I have no qualms about but I know it because I, I'm, it makes me decide if I should keep it or we read it or whatever. Anyway, another book that I might get to because I've owned, I bought this New Year's Day in 2018, so I've owned it for a couple of years now, and that's Journey to the Centre of the Earth by Jules Verne. And oh, look at that, it's pretty and it's got pictures in like that, which is I think is really cool. And it's a children's story, so I feel like an adventure, probably quite fast paced, or I hope it's fast paced. Story will be a good thing. Jareef is quite escapist at this time. Never read him before. I was going to buy Around the World in 80 Days. I remember I read the beginning of, there were three of his novels and this was just the one that grabbed me most. So maybe I'll finally get to it. And we have a book that I randomly picked out, which is Hag City by Margaret Atwood. Again, owned this for a few years now. It's part of the Hogarth Press Shapely retellings. And this is one of the Tempest, which is one of my favourite plays. I've really got a soft spot for the Tempest because I was in it at college. I played Miranda, and I, I just think it's, it's my favourite Shakespeare speech in it. And I think this is set in a prison. It's like someone who's putting it on in a prison, something like that. But I haven't read anything about Atwood apart from the Handmaid's Tale and Testaments, which is shocking because she has such a huge back catalogue. And my dad read this and really liked it, so I'm sure I will too. And yeah, just I think again. It looks interesting it's got kind of sections that it looks like they're written like a play um but it's just dialogue so i'm really really excited to read this if i get to whoa sorry i'm to drop you okay i need some gin let's have a let's have a little gin break oh yeah that's good um and then a book that i think is meant to be quite funny just heartburn i think it's got shiny bits we like the shiny and i am such a book magpie I just realised this. That's a good way to describe me. I think a lot of people are on booktube. We, we see beautiful aesthetic covers and we're drawn to them. Anyway, this is by Nora Ephron. I think I think it's about like a divorce story. I don't know, but it's part of, um, yes, um, not vintage, Virago, which is a woman's publishing press um, 40th anniversary. And they have these beautiful editions and I've got four of them. I've only read one of them. So I really feel like I need to read some more. And this is short and I think quite like hearted hearted even so um yeah prop's gonna be my jam and then i this is like i couldn't choose between them so i put both them on my tv i'll just probably read one of them i these are two persephone classics that i bought right at the end of the year so you've got high wages by dorothy whipple who i read some short story by before and absolutely loved and miss bunkle's book by d stevenson and wait i must show you the end papers and bookmarks oh bookmarks coming out look at that Oh, it's so exciting. That bookshop is just my favourite bookshop because I just love seeing all the different end papers. Look at that. I mean, um, but they're books that I bought the day my uncle passed away and I went in there and asked, can you give me two books that are hopeful and these are the ones the books that are recommended. And I was only, only going to buy one, but then obviously I had to buy both of them. So <laughs> again, I feel like I should read this because this is the time for hopeful books and something gentle. And I think this one is like a woman writing a book who lives in the country and this one is like a woman quitting her job I think and like being her own boss. I'm not sure but I, I would really like to read at least one of these and they're not actually as long as they look. I think they're like 300 and a little bit pages so I love the paper, I love everything. Oh, he's really happy to hold. Okay, I'm having a moment. This is what lockdown is doing. Um, I think I've had a lot of ravings about is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid, which a lot of people thought was going to be long listed for the Women's Prize, and I kind of sad it wasn't because it would have pushed me to read it a bit more. But I got this like special blue spray edge edition from Waterstones, um, and was just excited to read it. I think it's about a babysitter who's black in America, yes, and um, she is babysitting a white child, takes to the grocery store, and then 
everyone presumes in the store that she has stolen the child and it's about how that event kind of catapults into something much bigger and um, I think it's a lot about racial dynamics in America and um, about relationships like mother and daughter and that kind of thing and I, I just think it sounds really interesting and yeah, it's, it, I think it's a, I think it's a debut. I'm not sure. I think this is her first book. I could, you know, do research, but is this her first book? I think so. She's written short stories before, but I, look, look, there she is. Sorry, this is so rambly, but yes. Oh, I didn't even notice the end paper. That's unlike me. I don't really get what that is. Is it hair? What do you think that is? I'll read the book and find out. But yes, that's why I'm like hyped for one. I feel like I need to read it soon because it's had so much hype and I'm such a bad one for buying books that are hyped and not reading them. And then the hype goes and there's a new hype book and then I'm like, I'll get that too and not read that too. So yeah, and then talking of hype books, we have ooh, a book that actually was not listed for the Woman's Prize, which is Girl, Woman, Other, by, by sorry, Bernadine Everisto, which I'd be incredibly surprised if it isn't shortlisted because this was a book I bought in September Oh my gosh, there's a little tear. Oh, I'm so sad about that. I'm so sorry. Okay, I used to probably have to book it, it's a bit precious. Okay. <laughs> I, I just don't know my book's being hurt. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'll stop being ridiculous now. This is a book that's like 12 different women, and I think it's in sets of three, so you have like a daughter, a mother, and then an other person that's kind of in the outside of that relationship. I think that's how it works, and somehow they're all linked. But it's a book that I, before it was even long as if the book I've just said this before, I was really excited to read, and um, I don't read enough black British authors, or just BME authors at all, so this will be a great one to read. It is longer, but I think it looks like quite a fluid style, and I'm... Uh, I'm really hoping this sketch will see that I haven't read it yet I just feel like I know I'm gonna love it and I definitely want to read more of the long list I've read seven so far and I've not had one above three stars yet so I'm really hoping this is a, at least a four if not a five star read and then another women's price long list that I just happened to buy in January because it was half price Fleishman is in trouble I love this cover how clever by Taffy Brodesser Ackner. I think this is a debut as well. It's American. I think it's a guy kind of having a midlife crisis, which doesn't always sound like my jam, but I read the beginning and I like, quite liked the style, so... I mean, he's a guy in trouble. Don't know why he's in trouble, but I'll find out. I really want to do a try a chapter tag video with the Woman's Prize long list because I've got three books out from the library and I've got Hamlet on its way. I can't wait for it to arrive. So when I've got those six books, I'm going to read the first chapter or section of all of them and then decide which one I want to read the most and um, yeah if you'd like to see that I mean I'll probably do it anyway but whatever but yeah that's another one sorry it's gonna be a million years long then Lost Children Archive is another one that I bought last year in May for my birthday and by Valeria Lucelli because this is a book about I think Mexican migrants and, and like the American border tension um, and I recently read Dominicana by Angie Cruz, uh, which I didn't like, <laughs> and I was really sad. Um, and I feel like Lost Children Archive will be kind of doing like a similar sort of thing, but it's actually a good book. And it was almost a woman's prize, and there wasn't shortlisted, and I was sad. But I, I, I think that meant I didn't want to read it as much, so um, I just haven't. But I, it's got pictures at the back, and I don't know why or what they mean, but I just want to read it. Um, physically, I don't want this one in an audiobook. So yeah, I really hope I can get to this one, but it is like a good 400 pages, I think. Wow, it's not, oh dear, oh my god, I thought it was page numbers for a second. Don't you just hate that? It's actually not as long as I thought, okay, well, hopefully. And then a book that's like the ultimate comfort read. I want to read Harry Potter, because I was going to read it with Tom Reed's thing, because he's doing like a, like a Harry Potter reading thing like each month. And then I just didn't read it, I don't know why. So this is the next illustrated edition that I've got. I haven't got the others yet. It's gonna happen guys, but this is Chamber of Secrets and I'm very scared to read the article chapter. Oh my goodness, but I'm, you know, I'm just gonna be cautious when I get to it, so I'll be fine. But I, I need Harry Potter in my life. And oh my god, this is so heavy. I'm gonna put that down now. And then moving on. Oh my gosh, I promise we're nearly there. I'm so sorry, I know this is ridiculous. I know I'm not gonna read all of these. I just want to read everything, but I also like 
can sometimes I can't focus and sometimes I really want to read I'm really fluctuating at the moment anyway I didn't get on with the video okay oh wait I need more gin okay sorry oh that's so good okay this is a book that I bought the last day of February when I went to Kamini Shamsi's talk and she signed it for me wait let me show you I was very happy Ta da um, and it is the book I've most likely to read by her. I can't remember what it's about. I think it goes through a, a long time. Yes, it starts in 1945 and it goes to like 9-11. So I've had, I know Simon Sage Reed really likes this book and she's just a great writer. I recently read Cartography by her. I really love it. This is like the one, those two books were the only books I hadn't read like within a year from what I bought last year. So that's, that's a bit upsetting. So I really want to get this one read and hopefully the other May ones then I can like breathe again. <laughs> because um, that's one of my biggest targets. I think it's really important to try and like read books when you're still excited about them and I love Community Shamsi. Like Home Fire was amazing but I feel like I'm very bad for reading like Margaret Atwood one book by an author and then not reading anything else but saying oh, I really love that author so much but I haven't explored their back catalogue at all so it'll be nice to read this one. Although I've got to say Home Fire had a cracking cover and like these are really like leaving something to be desired like i'll be honest like if i saw that in a bookshop probably wouldn't be super keen to pick that up anyway move on from that to a book that was recommended to me by a bookseller in waterstones this is beware of pity by stephen i presume it's Zweig. i think it's translated from german i think he's austrian but it was in German and it's a book because it, this book said I recommended me a book before and I love asking books as recommendations it's great so he recommended me three different books that were also translated and I picked this one I can't remember what it was about I think oh it's okay it's Austro-Hungarian Empire I couldn't tell you what time of the year year of in the world that is I you, you know what I mean but I think I think there's like a cavalry officer and he asks like a woman to dance and he shouldn't do that and it just goes on from there. I don't know, but it's a book that I think I'm not sure I'm gonna like or find it really dense. Oh, it's small print. Oh, I don't approve of this. But anyway, it's a book that I just want to try. I think like maybe read a couple of chapters and see how I feel. If I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. But I want to like it. I really like that book, Seller and Waterstones. Anyway, there's that one. And then the book. I think this is the last. Yes, this is the last one that was like out of my May books I haven't read yet that I put on my end of year TBR last year and. I know a book Olive was saying, sorry, Olive from a book Olive was saying that she really likes this one. So, this is Margaret the First by Daniel Dustin, which had a lot of hype in BookTube a few years ago when it first came out. I love this cover, probably one of my favourites ever. Just beautiful. And it's about a woman scientist, and I think the, I can't remember if it's the 16th century or the 17th. What year is it starting? Oh, I don't know. Classic Jane, no research. But it's several centuries ago and um, I'm all about women doing cool things and I think it's fictional I don't think she was a real person maybe she was I don't know I have to google this but I'll find out but it, it was a book that I think again is it a debut I don't know but it's it was much loved and I hope I love it too and then some poetry because why not so this was on last month's TBR for Irish Readathon and I haven't read it yet but I want to read it because I've had it for a long time so I really really like to get this on my TBR oh it's so floppy I love the favourite editions of poetry I think they're so nice but it's it's again one that I've I've got the audiobook of and I want to listen to it but I will read it at the same time because it's, it's got really helpful notes in the margin because I know nothing I'm such a novice about Beowulf and any anything pretty much before Shakespeare so that'll just be nice to read and I'll see maybe I'll read it gradually I don't know and then the other one I really want to get to is whoa don't be falling down now stay there books right sorry you can't see what's going on down here this is very precarious piles that's the tiles I really need to finish this video this is what William Wordsworth's like part of the Faber Nature Poets series oh we didn't notice that poems were selected by Seamus Heaney there you go I, I'm so good at linking things but it's got Wait for it. I probably already showed this, but I'm going to show you again. Duh! Oh wait, that was really underwhelming. Duh! <laughs> the, the, oh, oh my god, it's what lives in my book. I'm such a class. You guys, what am I like? Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But this is a wonderful series, and there's I think six of them all together, five or six. But again, escapist nature. It's what I want. It's what I need. And. Uh, 
I really find solace in poetry, in like old poetry particularly, but I, I, oh, recommendation. I have been on SoundCloud listening to the actor Samuel West read poetry every day, and he reads like three poems, and he's got other actors and stuff to read poems, and it's just so wonderful, and I found so many poems and poets I have never heard of before that are just beautiful, and he reads a real range, like nonsense poems, like Jabberwocky or Nini Nang Nong, but then he also reads like really profound poetry or famous poetry, and I just love it, so I will link it down below. It's a really, really great initiative, and it's just a nice thing to look forward to every morning seeing which poems he's reading so there's your like poetry fix and um a book that i bought at the beginning of the year grandmothers by sally vickers i've never read anything by but it's about three different grandmothers and i love that i love um stories about women and those kind of relationships and that's kind of what i know about it but that's enough for me and um I think it'll be like a sweet story and hopefully heartwarming, hopefully not too sad, I don't know, I don't know, maybe they'll all die, who knows? <laughs> no, they won't all die. Happy thoughts, Jenny. Let's have some jit. That's always happy. Mm. Okay, and then a book. I think I also bought the end of the year. How did I any book calls for you? I'm so sorry. I just realised you don't even know I bought these books. But it's The House Without Windows by Barbara Newhall, Follett and Jackie Morris. Look at this beautiful cover. And this does have my own papers. Look at that. Lovely. Um, and this is like a children's story that I hadn't heard of and it's like a hundred years old but she's one of these like child prodigies and then she just randomly disappeared when she was like 30 or something and no one knows what happened to her. So mysterious. But uh, I think this is like a kind of feminist children's story about like needing your own space and that kind of thing and not wanting to be contained. I don't know, but I should know there's a, there's a young girl as a protagonist, so you know, I'm down, and it's short, and it's got nice illustrations. That's not the best example, Jenny. Find a better one. God, we'll get there eventually. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Like this! Yeah, she is the illustrator who illustrated The, the Lost Words, so really big fan of her work. I mean, this is the only second book I'm, you know, gonna read with her illustrations in, but you know, really big fan. <laughs> and then last. <gasps> But not least, if you've made it to this far, congratulations. It is a, a library book I actually got out at university not knowing they'd have it. She just tried some Refugee Crisis by Kate Evans, which is a graphic novel, and it's the one that I've been interested in reading a long time. Not cheery, I know, but um, I quite like graphic novels because they're quick to read and um, it's really stimulating having pictures. That sounds really childish, but genuinely, I think, I think illustrations make everything better. I think if adult books had illustrations in, they will be better <laughs> a lot of the time. So it's quite an interesting way you have this kind of cut out newspaper presentation of the dialogue and or of the story and I really liked that. Um, so I'm just going to read that because it's also nice to read something quickly that you can like take something off on your Goodreads and like bump up your number. Oh that's, that was quite a good shoulder rush now. Bump, bump. Okay I'm going to stop bumping now. I'm going to drink some gin and uh, finally sign off this whatever it is, like 25 minute video. So yes, ridiculous amount of books, but who knows, if, do you know what, if I read five books that's fine, but I would really like to get my TBR down significantly. It is on 187 at the beginning of the month, so we'll see. So yeah, I hope you're doing okay, let me know what you are reading, like have you been reading more, have you been reading less, like tell me, I want to know, just talk to me. We just need communication okay i'll stop being needy now um but yeah i will i will see you soon on bookish shenanigans bye